In this After Effects tutorial, we go into space. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. And this is my second tutorial on creating a space scene. In my last tutorial, which I created like 10 months ago, uh, I used a plugin. And in this video, I want to be able to create a space scene without using any plugins and kind of make it as easy as possible. In this case, I think this is very easy to do and there's no plugins. So let's get started. I already have a new composition here, 1920 by 1080. And first thing we're going to do is go up to layer, new, solid. And we're going to call this one particles and click OK. And then we're going to go up to effect simulation CC particle world and I love this effect so much but we're gonna go here and drag the layer forward by a touch so we can kind of see all these particles and we're gonna go into the uh, particle and we're gonna set the particle type to a faded sphere and we're gonna go here and change the birth color and death color to white nice and we'll set the max opacity to 100% and the size variation to 100% and we'll set the birth size down to 0 0.05 and the depth size to 0 0.05 so we have this consistent uh, shape of particles here and then we'll go into the physics and we'll set the velocity down to zero and the gravity down to zero as well and then we'll go back up into the producer and we'll set the radius x to go all the way across our composition and the same for radius y make sure it goes to the top to bottom and then let's go ahead and jump up the birth rate like crazy to maybe like 30 or so. And then what we're going to do is increase the radius Z like crazy as well. So maybe like go to like seven or so. So now we have all these particles and as you can see, they're kind of dying off. So we're going to go to the longevity and we'll set this up to like 30. So now we have a ton of particles and what we need to do is stop the birth rate. So come to like maybe right here like when there's enough particles on the screen add a keyframe for birth rate uh, go forward by one frame and set the birth rate down to zero so now the particles will stop generating on and say right here when they're at its max opacity let's go ahead and just drag this all the way to the beginning of our timeline and then we can drag our out point across the timeline like this and now we have uh, a consistent stream of particles that are not moving and they're just there, which is great. And of course, you can change this color to whatever color that you want. You might want yellow. I'm just keeping it a white for this tutorial. I used yellow in my demo. But let's go to the top. Go to Layer, New, Camera. And just click OK. I'm using the 50 millimeter preset. And click OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open up Camera 1. Go into the Transform Properties. Add a keyframe for Position. And we'll go forward to end of our composition here. Uh, maybe like seven uh, let's go to like seven seconds to the end of our animation and come here to the top and we're going to grab the track z camera tool and make sure to swap the active cam to camera one and if we click here and we hold down shift we can get like a very nice smooth fly through so now we added a keyframe down here because of our animation and as you see we are now flying through our cloud of stars if this is too many particles uh, what you can do is just go ahead and hit u on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes go to this like you know, uh, previous keyframe button down here. Go to where there's numbers and maybe bring down the birth rate by a little bit. And if you go back, and you can see there's less uh, particles in here. And that's all cool. So now let's go ahead and actually build this epic, you know, sci-fi space scene out. So I have a few images in here. Um, and of course, these are free downloads. You can go to this website called uh, Pexels. And basically, this is an amazing website because they have a huge photo library of pretty much anything you're looking for and it's all free it's free for commercial use you can distribute it it's insane i don't know where this came from but it's like a gift so this website is called pexels of course you can always download these project files we're gonna come here and drag in like one of these uh, nebulas and you know here we might have to scale it down since it is a large photo okay so our goal is to blend this in very nicely with our scene so we can composite other images as well so what we need to do is darken this out so let's go up to effect color correction curves and let's just come here and just darken this out like crazy like this because we're going to use a transfer mode here in a second. And that should be okay. And then maybe go to effect, color correction, uh, brightness and contrast. And we'll bring down the brightness by a little bit. And we'll toggle switch the modes until we see the uh, blending modes. And we'll set this to screen. So now it kind of blends in there with our stars. And, you know, we can be able to composite more images into here. So that's always good. Then let's go back up to our project window. And let's go ahead and bring in another image. Now we have our other image in here. Let's also set this to screen right now. And then we come up here to our original 
uh, you know, layer and copy the curves and uh, brightness and contrast and paste it into our new one here and kind of give us an idea where things are playing together. And then what we need to do is toggle switch to modes and set both these layers to 3D layers. And we'll hit P on our keyboard for position. And we need to bring this new sort of purple nebula back into Z space. And then of course we can kind of, you know, Y position this down. So now as we fly right through this, we can go through our first nebula and then we're gonna see the second sort of uh, clouds and dust over here. And now it's completely put off in 3D space, which I think is really awesome. Of course, you can lower the opacity of these if they're too intense for your taste. Um, of course, another suggestion what I, like, what I like to do since I don't like complete black, like I never like uh, complete black or complete white. What we're gonna do is go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And this is more of a stylistic choice on my part, but go up to effect color correction curves. And I want to go ahead and just bring up this uh, bottom point down here just so we kind of have a little bit of a, a dark gray instead of a pitch black. I'm going to come here and drag in another one. And this is an awesome quasar. Okay, that sounded very nerdy. Um, it's it's uh, dust and stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, please let me know if that is a quasar. I'm pretty sure that is. I don't know. It doesn't look like the ones I see in the documentaries. That's all. But let's come here and we can scale this down by a touch and... You know, we can double, we can grab the ellipse tool and double click it. And this will kind of help us get rid of this hard edge. And what we'll do is hit MM on our keyboard to bring up all the mask properties. And we'll feather it out to maybe like 100, 200-ish. And then we'll go here and decrease the max expansion to around that. So now it almost looks like it's basically in there. I know a little bit of the clouds getting cut off, but um, you can go ahead and tweak that. But we're going to come here and course make this a 3d layer and we're going to put this back into uh, Z space so maybe we'll put this quasar up here maybe we'll go ahead and increase the scale back to 100% and we can put this like up in the corner and of course maybe we will continue to bring this back into Z space to like maybe 10,000 over there and then of course for the Quasar, I'll probably go up to Effect, Stylize, and we'll add a Glow effect. And I'll kind of make that pop out a little bit more. Of course, we'll go ahead and increase the Glow threshold to probably like 80%. And a little before and after, if you guys can see, it's just a little bit more intense. And we go ahead and bring in another image. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of skip over this part since you guys kind of understand how this uh, workflow works now. And I don't want to waste too much time, but go ahead and bring another image and I'll show you what I do here in a second. Okay, so I have these both set to screen and I have my new image in here all the way pushed in the back here. I'll just zoom in here or kind of go through in time. And basically I didn't use the brightness and contrast effect and I just have the curves in there. And what we can do is now grab say the rounded rectangle tool since this was a perfect square and sometimes you just need to mask these things out a little bit just so they blend very nicely together. And of course just crease the feather and decrease the mask expansion by a touch. And then, of course, what I suggest doing, since this might be too intense and we're getting a little crazy here with the colors, maybe hit T on your keyboard for opacity and set this down to like 35%. So this one will kind of blend nicely together and you see this, you know, it's coming together. And of course, we have like one more that we can add and I'm going to add like a big one all the way in the back, which is this nice big nebula. I'm going to add it all the way in the back of our composition here. And I'm going to make sure this is all the way in the back, maybe like 12,000 pixels. And maybe I'll also scale it up. I think that could be cool. And then I'll set the opacity down to 10%. And then we'll come over here and also set the blend mode to screen. So that, that will kind of create some nice, you know, ambience in here. So depending on your images, sometimes you might see the actual box here. And for this one, we don't actually have to grab like a re rounded rectangle tool. So let's grab the pen tool and just like, you know, click around, you know, add points around our nebula here or whatever this is. And we'll come here, just feather it out. And it looks pretty good. So you might have to deal with some of that depending on your images that you're using. You know, and maybe for this big one, I will definitely add a rounded, you know, rectangle to this as well. And then kind of mask, kind of mask that out, feather it, and then decrease the mask expansion by a touch. And of course, we can always go to, and then of course, if we need to bring this down even more, go to effect, color correction, curves. And this will be a good opportunity just to darken it up a little bit. Awesome. So our epic space scene here is kind of mapped out. And now we can come here and maybe add some text if you want. So maybe you're doing like a documentary and you need some text. So grab the textile tool and we type out our text. 
There we go. That's better. And we'll go to the Align tab and center this all up. You don't see the Align tab, go up to Window, Align. And of course, we can make this a 3D layer. And we can hit P on our keyboard and really push this back into 3D space. So maybe like 2,000 pixels, almost 3,000 there. And it'll, we'll fly right towards it. And what what I suggest doing, since this you know we don't really want to see the text, I guess maybe maybe you do, but I'm gonna go to effects and presets, and I'm gonna go to animation presets, go to text, I'm gonna go to blurs, and I'm gonna use evaporate, and I think I used this preset in my last space tutorial, but you know whatever, and we'll hit U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes, and we'll bring these both closer together. Select both the keyframes, right click them, go to keyframe assistance, and click on time reverse keyframes, and now what's gonna happen? is we're going to have this nice little animation here where it kind of blurs on and I think that makes sense for what we're trying to do. And of course what's cool about having this 3D spacing set up is that if we wanted to, we could fly, you know, right uh, past the text if we really wanted to. So I'll just kind of quickly show you how that looks. So as you can see we have the text up here in the corner and our camera would fly right by it. So that's of course very interesting and always good to set up. So you see we're getting closer. And, you know, we can fly right through the text. Pretty awesome. But I'm not going to do that for this video. Not needed in my opinion. And, of course, make sure to turn on motion blur for, you know, pretty much everything. And turn it on at the top. And you should be good to go. And if you are following along with this video, this is what you should have gotten. And, yes, this is my original demo because I have the yellow particles. Um, but, you know, I think it looks really awesome. And I think it's a great way to set up a space scene. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.